Hello and welcome to this video on the M plus output for a growth mixture model. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to multivariate statistical methods including factor models, structural equation models, multi-level models and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly newsletter and other videos and workshops. In this video, I want to walk you through the M plus default output for a growth mixture model. So what does M plus give us when we run a standard syntax for a growth mixture model? And so here in this example, I have a model that I fit to four observed variables, meaning there are four time points. It is assumed here that the four time points are equally spaced. And so then I was in this model extracting three latent classes. So I wanted to know are there different growth trajectories in three different unobserved uh, or latent groups. And so here in this um, model I'm specifying model statement I'm specifying a linear growth curve model in each class using the overall statement where I and S are my intercept and slope factor respectively and then here I list the observed variables along with the loadings that imply linear growth because they are fixed to 0, 1, 2 and 3 on the slope factor and so M plus then will assume that in each of the three latent classes linear growth holds but that the classes can differ in terms of their average trajectories, their average intercept value and the average slope value. I also included the plot option so that I can easily take a look at the trajectories in each latent class. So I want to show you now what M plus gives us by default when we run a growth mixture model like this. If you want to know more details about the syntax commands here, I have a separate video in which I discuss the syntax in more detail and you find the link to that below in the description. We can see that this analysis here is based on 976 cases, so it's a fairly large sample size. When we scroll down, the first thing that we should always check when we run any kind of mixture analysis or latent class analysis in M plus where we extract unknown subgroups is whether the best log likelihood value could be replicated for multiple sets of starting values because and with mixture models you can run into so-called local likelihood maxima that may be associated with an invalid solution that contains parameter estimates that are not the true maximum likelihood parameter estimates and then, then might give you an incorrect idea about what the latent classes look like. So here you can see that the best log likelihood value which is given in the first column was replicated for um, several different sets of starting values. So here we can be fairly certain that this is a true maximum likelihood solution. If you're not sure about this, then you could further increase the number of starts in the M plus syntax and see if you will still obtain the same log likelihood value for several more sets of starting values. The model estimation terminated normally and so you can see below that a message about the model estimation terminating normally, we find model fit information. So here you can, for example, use information criteria to compare this model to other models, for example, models that would extract more or fewer classes to see how many classes you should retain. For example, the BIC value is often used to compare models with different numbers of classes or models that otherwise differ in terms of, for example, parameter constraints. And so this can be used for descriptive model comparisons. And then below that we get the estimated class sizes for our three latent classes under final class counts and proportions for the latent classes based on the estimated model. And you can see here that class one in this case was the largest class with about 48% of cases and then class 2 was the smallest one with about 11% and class 3 had 
uh, roughly 40% of cases in it. Now, in order to see what these classes really mean, we have to take a look at the parameter estimates. And so I wanna go down to that section. I wanna skip the other stuff here and just go to the model results section. So here you can see that for each latent class and plus outputs the set of parameter estimates for the linear growth curve model. And so one thing that we have to know about M plus and how it operates, so to say by default, is that M plus for a factor mixture model and also um, a growth mixture model has certain default constraints that it imposes across classes, default equality constraints, and those concern the variances and covariances. Specifically, M plus will by default constrain the factor covariance, the factor variances, and the residual variances for the indicators to be equal across classes. And so you can check that, for example, for the intercept and slope factor covariance by looking at this value negative 0.012 in class one. Then when you go down to class two, you find the exact same value with the exact same standard error and test statistic and p-value as in class one. And so this shows you that this parameter is assumed to be equal across the classes. Furthermore, you can see the same thing for the variances. So here we have the intercept variance is 1.04 and the slope variance is 0.196 in class one. And you find the exact same variances right here also. So that is something that M plus does by default. If it's not a constraint that you want, you can relax it. So you can relax any of these constraints by including class specific statements in your input file, in your syntax, where you say that, for example, in class one, I want to have my variance freely estimated or my covariance or my residual variances. And so you can, in principle, relax these constraints and that may make sense, but oftentimes a model where the variances are set free is less stable and leads to um, less clear class solution. That's probably the reason why M plus has these default constraints to make the models more stable and um, more easily, more easy to estimate. So here we have um, the only so say differences that are allowed between the classes by default are with regard to the factor means. So you can see that factor means for the intercept and slope factor are also estimated, which is typical or is um, standard when we do growth curve models because we're interested in the average growth trajectory. So we want to know how much did people change on average, where did they start on average and so on. And so the means are estimated here and these are allowed to vary between the classes. So really the differences between the classes concern the means in this default output that M plus provides. And you can see class one has an intercept factor mean of about five. So this that's the average starting point, so to say, in class one. And then the slope factor mean is negative 0.065. So it's pretty close to zero and not statistically significant at the 0.05 level. So there is very little, if any, decline in this class. So for example, if this were a group of uh, maybe psychiatric patients and the outcome variable here maybe was depression, then that is would mean that this is a group that has a st starting depression level of about five and it doesn't change very much across time. Now let's take a look at the means in class two. And so class two, in class two, you can see that the, uh, the mean of the intercept is similarly high. It's also, uh, or it's 4.5, the class one mean was 4.858. So they have a similar starting point, similarly high um, depression initial value, so to say, at time one. But in this class, there is a significant decline on average. So in class two, the average decline is 0.776, so say per unit of time. This is what the expected 
decline in depression is and so that's statistically significant so class 1 and class 2 differ in terms of the change over time in class 1 there's hardly any change or maybe none at all in class 2 there's a decline even though both of them start at about the same level now let's take a look at class 3 in class 3 we have a much lower initial depression score only 1.8 and these individuals also don't show any meaningful or statistically significant at least change. So this is not statistically significant. The slope factor mean indicating that there's no change on average in this class. We can also visualize these classes in M plus by clicking on the plot option here and then plot view plots we can look at the estimated means for example in the different classes by choosing this option here estimated means medians modes and percentiles and then view and so the default is that we will be given the estimated means that we just looked at in the output and we will look at all classes in the same plot so that we can directly compare those classes so let me click OK and then you can see that here we have the three classes and now you can very clearly see how they differ. Class 1 is the largest class with a high level of depression that is stable over time so those are individuals that stay depressed so to say and then class 2 is a class that starts similarly high as class 1 with regard to depression but they show a decline over time so maybe those are individuals who um, respond to a certain treatment whereas the individuals in class 1 maybe do not respond to the treatment or for them it doesn't work and so then this could filter out so to say individuals for whom a treatment is effective namely the members of class 2 so those are ones for whom perhaps this does have an effect whereas for class 1 members there's no effect and then class 3 is a class that is not depressed or, or has low depression scores to begin with and then also doesn't show much of a change um, over time or not any change at all and you also in this graph you also get the class sizes here so that you can see again how large each class is i hope you found this video useful to learn more about how to run growth mixture models in the M plus software. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. And I'll see you next time.